Okay, so other cool things Emacs can do. So I'm going to switch back to the file I was in before. So we're back to the tele.c file. So at the beginning of this lecture, I said Emacs isn't an IDE. It's just a text editor. That's actually a lie. Uh, Emacs can do a lot of things, including <laughs> essentially you can compile your code inside of Emacs, and it'll tell you what your errors are and all of that kind of jazz. So we're going to do this real quick. Don't worry too much. I mean, if you don't know C, and you've never used make files before, there's going to be some things in here that come to the later lectures, and we'll get into them. But the basic gist is, I have this file. I want to go and compile it. I'm going to do alt x. So alt x, like I said, takes me to command mode. So I'm down here at the command mode. And I'm just going to type in the word compile. So if I type in the word compile, it's going to say, OK, confirm the compile command. By default, it's always going to be make.k. You can change the default. Uh, if you're using make files, this is what you want it to be anyway, because this is essentially a make file is a separate file that tells the computer how to build all of this code. Um, so I have a make file. It's already been written. Uh, so make.k is going to work just fine. I'm just going to hit enter. It's going to confirm that I want to save this file, because you know, it's a good idea to save it before I go and compile it. And it's going to want to know that I want to save my .py file. Well, who cares? It's not actually going to do anything. I don't want to save a new file. I'm going to save it all. It doesn't actually matter. When I'm done saving it, it's going to actually start to compile down here. It's going to say compilation started. It's going to show me the commands that are running. And then it's going to say it finished successfully. That's what the green means. And I confirm it down here at the bottom. So that's not very exciting. I just compiled my program. Uh, what's more exciting is what happens if I have an error. So again, I can do, oh, I didn't show this one before. Um, so my screen automatically splits when I go into compile mode. So it can start showing me the compilation output at the bottom. My cursor is still up here. I could close this window by doing control X0, bringing the cursor down here, and then doing control X0 and closing this window, right? But if you want to close all of the windows except the one your cursor is currently in, you can do control X1. So control X1 will essentially close everything that your cursor's not currently in. So it's handy in situations like that and you don't want to have the answer back over. So let's add an error. Let's move to semicolon. Right? So I'm going to do the compile command again. Control X, compile. That's all still fine. I'm going to save this. And you'll see now it hit some errors while I was compiling. So I want to go to those errors. Uh, it knows how to do that automatically. If I do control X and then tilde, so on most keyboards, this is the key to the left of the one. Um, if I do control X tilde, it's going to jump me down to the first error and take my cursor to the line on which the error occurred. Right? So it's saying error expected semicolon before return. Well, you know, this is just the compiler being as far as it can be. The error is not actually on this line, it's on the line right before, and I need to go add that semicolon. Right? I could do this again. It's going to say, warning, control reaches in an unavoid function. This isn't really an error. This is a side effect of that first error I had. So I made the change. I'm good. I'm going to do Alt X compile again. It's going to save the file. And this time, it compiles correctly. So it may seem kind of trivial now, but when you have a 400 line C program with 20 errors, it's really easy to be able to just keep hitting the key and have it take you to each error one at a time so you can fix them in your file. Um, this works in any language, uh, and again, using the make file is the default, but it actually, you, you, could, you could type in your compile command here directly, right? Um, so if instead of make k, I could just type in gcc hello.c is the name of this file, and it could compile it directly. So in real life, you use make files, you never type that in by itself, but you can put whatever there you want. Um, you don't even have to technically compile, right? You could type in ls there, and it would print out the directory. And then it would probably get very confused, because it wouldn't be able to parse it. It's not a normal compiler output. But it will, in fact, accept any old command there. Emacs actually has an entire built-in shell, uh, amongst other things. So do control x1 to close that again. If I do alt x and just type in shell, it's taking me to a shell, but you'll notice the shell is still I'm inside Emacs, right? I still have the bottom bar, I still have the top bar. I can go start running commands. This is helpful when you have situations like, uh, I mean, it's helpful in a lot of situations, but sometimes I can also use all of the Emacs commands that I could normally use. So I just did ls, it printed out everything in this directory, but I can also copy it, I can cut that line, right? I can do control k. 
So then I could go over into some text file, and like I could paste that line into my text file. So the more useful case of this is, I mean, how can you paste ls out? But the more useful case would be you're sitting in the shell and you print out some file, right? So you're printing out that .py file, and you want to copy some code from it. You can now just quickly grab that code, right, without even having to open the file in Emacs, come paste it over here, and so on and so forth. I actually don't use the shell that often, but the point is you can do anything, right? Emacs has its own shell interpreter. Um, so you run any command that would work in any other place in that shell. It starts to get ridiculous. We are going to spend a little bit of time. I think that wraps up the bulk of what I was going to show on Emacs. So I can still spend a little bit of time covering some non-Emacs stuff. Uh, questions on kind of what we just went over? Um, is there a way to come out? Comment out multiple lines on it? Yes. Is that it? It's almost yeah. certainly on this sheet somewhere, and I don't know it off the top of my head, but I've used it before. Uh, if it's not on the sheet, Google comment block. So that's probably what it says. It's probably the kind of thing where you will, so you'll use the control space and the arrow to highlight the block, mm -hmm. and then there'll be some command that'll comment out that entire block. But yeah, that's almost certainly there. Emacs, I think, will even do code folding if you like that. There's ways to get, like start collapsing functions so you don't have to look at them. Mm -hmm. I never used the functionality. But it's one of those things that, as it turns out, if you can conceive of it, Emacs probably has a way to do it. Uh, Emacs gets criticized for this. It does everything in the kitchen sink. Um, in fact, it even has built-in games. If you do Alt-X, uh, it has a copy of Tetris. It has a copy of Snake. Uh, it has a copy of a few other arcade games. We'll pull up Tetris. Like, I can sit here and play Tetris in Emacs, right? I mean, there is no reason a text editor needs to have a copy of Tetris. But the point is, Emacs has everything. Uh, it even has a copy of Eliza, if anyone's familiar. Yeah. Yeah, so if you do Control x so Eliza was an early AI program. It's a psychoanalytical it's a psychoanalytical chatbot. Um, it's kind of famous in the AI world, but, you know, it says, please describe your problems. I to teach Emacs and I don't like it. So on and so forth, right? I can have a conversation with this chatbot all day. <laughs> uh, anyway, point being, there's ridiculous numbers of things that Emacs can do. We have scratched the surface. Uh, there's weird stuff that there's no reason to even be in there in the first place. I will try to link to this afterwards. If you just Google Emacs games, there's actually all of the weird things Emacs can do are on a single page of the nice GNU Emacs manual. It's like, um, there's a bunch of it. It's, it. It gets bizarre, right? Well, I trust you can do this. If you, go, if you Google Emacs games, the first hits should be like GNU Emacs manual amusements, and there's an entire page on all of this weird shit that Emacs will do, right? So, yeah, that's why people, people that don't like Emacs criticize it for doing too much, because uh, it does everything. Emacs is actually a Lisp interpreter. If anyone's in the Lisp, all of Emacs, all of this magic that's happening in Emacs is done in Lisp. So if you're a big Lisp programmer, you love Emacs even more because it gets really, if you want to extend Emacs, you need to know Lisp. Uh, all of the customizations Emacs are done in Lisp. And uh, Emacs really is a Lisp. It's a text editor, but it's really a Lisp interpreter. So, so on and so forth. Okay, I'm going to exit Emacs. Oh. Huh? This computer's being replaced tomorrow, as it turns out. All right. Well, this is a good place to break anyway. 